Hello. In this video, we will summarize the events that take place during the first week of uh, development of the human embryo. The development will start uh, with the event of fertilization, and what we are seeing in this diagram is a fertilized ovum. If you can um, appreciate this um, yellow circle surrounding the fertilized ovum, this signifies the uh, shell that we call the zona pellucida. Uh, the zona pellucida is the um, shield around the ovum that will allow the, uh, the sperm to go through uh, after a series of, um, uh, of reactions. Uh, and once the uh, sperm, which you see here, the head of the sperm is inside, uh, the ovum, fertilized ovum now, uh, the zona will undergo a chemical reaction that uh, will make it impermeable to any subsequent uh, sperms. Uh, we call that uh, change the zona uh, reaction. This is very important to prevent um, fertilization by multiple sperms, and contrary to what you might think, uh, if two sperms fertilize the same ovum, that, we, uh, that will result in um, uh, polysomy, uh, not really uh, the formation of twins. It will yield an embryo that uh, cannot survive beyond uh, a few days. So what do we see here also is the head of the sperm, as we said. We had the pronucleus, the female pronucleus up there. Uh, and we have two polar bodies. The two polar bodies here are um, a clear sign that fertilization took place because the second polar body uh, developed when the ovum completed in its second meiotic division. And that will only occur after fertilization. So we have two pronuclei here, or two uh, components. We have the head of the sperm. It will form the male uh, pronucleus. Uh, and we have the, the female pronucleus, and what will happen next um, is the, the male pronucleus will form, and both the male and the female pronuclei will undergo this, the S phase uh, of mitosis, and that means they will double their uh, genetic material. Uh, then they will combine together into uh, one mass, and then they will undergo the first mitotic division to form the next step here, which is the two-cell stage. Uh, this two-cell stage uh, occurs about 30 hours, a little bit more than one day after fertilization took place. You will have two uh, identical uh, cells, both will have the full 46 chromosomes of, uh, of humans. Then the two uh, cells will undergo further divisions, mitotic divisions, to form four cells, then eight cells, then 16 cells. Once you reach the 16 cell stage, you notice that you still have the zona pellucida uh, in, in place, which means the space within it is still the same. Those cells are getting smaller and smaller, having more contact between them. Once you reach that 16 cell stage, this um, uh, stage will be called the morula. And the morula is the stage that will actually um, reach the uterus. Remember that fertilization took place ideally or normally in the fallopian tube. And while the cells are dividing, the, the fertilized ovum is moved as it progresses into multiple stages, is actually pushed towards the uterus. And by the time it, it, uh, the fertilized ovum becomes uh, the morula, it had already reached um, the, uh, the uterus. And once it reaches the uterus, the uh, zona pellucida will go away. And, uh, and the cells will continue to divide, forming the 32-cell stage. And then the, the cells will have some kind of a cavity within them. We're not going to talk about the names for now. You can look these up. Um, uh, but I will give you only two names here. Now you have a cavity, uh, and you have a mass of cells inside here. And you have a, a, a layer of cells that surround the whole thing. 
uh, the zona pellucida has disappeared, and now this uh, stage is called the, the blastocyst. Blastocyst. Uh, the blastocyst is the, the stage that has a cavity, an inner cell mass, and um, uh, a layer of cells uh, around it. The inner cell mass is the part of the blastocyst that will form the embryo. We call it the embryoblast, or the, the mass of cells that will make the embryo, okay? Um, the layer around it is called the trophoblasts, or the supportive layers that will form all the tissues that will support uh, the embryo after implantation, and also will be important for implantation itself, um, and in that in those tissues will include the, uh, uh, the placenta and the membranes. Uh, so when the blastocyst um, keeps rolling along the wall of the uterus, uh, typically in the posterior wall of the uterus or the roof of the uterus, um, they, it will come in contact with uh, the uh, epithelial cells of uh, the uh, endometrium, which we, you see here in pink. And uh, a lot of crosstalk will, will, will occur between the um, uh, end, uh, epithelial cells of the endometrium and the trophoblasts. And then the trophoblast will uh, differentiate into two layers, the cytotrophoblast and the syncytio trophoblast. Those arms that you see here is a syncytium or a continuum of cells. Uh, the, this is the layer that we call the syncytio trophoblast. Those are the highly invasive cells that will burrow through uh, the epithelium and the underlying tissues and allow the, um, the, uh, uh, the blastocyst to be buried into the wall of the uterus. Uh, this process is called the um, uh, implantation, and it takes place within a week uh, or at the end of the first week of, um, uh, of uh, embryogenesis. When the uh, embryoblast, uh, I mean, the, uh, when the blastocyst is implanted inside uh, the wall, the, the, I will just uh, go over one feature here, which is this in situ trophoblast is so huge now that it's um, uh, invading uh, blood vessels in the wall of the uterus forming pools of arterial and venous blood um, inside the syncytiotrophoblast layer and also breaking down glands uh, within the uterine wall and those glands will, will support uh, the syncytiotrophoblast with all the nutrition that they have been storing inside. And we will continue uh, the next stage in uh, a subsequent video.